Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Wisconsin Historical Society Ojibwe Storytelling Night. We are very excited to have you. Um, tonight we have Kubi Val Barber, which is, who is from LCO. She's going to be starting storytelling in a few minutes. But right now, while we've got you, we'd love for you to tell us where you're where you're joining us from. So if you could go down to the chat box and put in the chat box, you know, where you're joining us from, maybe who you're joining with. So if you're watching with your family or your significant other or your cat or your dog, or maybe you're at a watch party, we've got a few watch parties going on around the state. There's one in Manitowish Waters. I think there's one in Two Rivers. Um, maybe you're joining from Bad River. That's my reservation. Um, I'm joining you tonight from Ashland. I'm at the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center, uh, which is kind of just outside of Ashland on your way to, to Bayfield Washburn kind of right there at two and highway 13. Um, and Val drove all the way up to join me here at the visitor center. She drove up from LCO tonight. And I don't know how your weather is, but we are getting some more rain and snow. Let's take a minute and look at where people are coming from. Pelican Rapids, uh, Minnesota, Appleton, La Pointe. Geez, you're right just around the corner. South Bend, Indiana, South Dakota. Um, we've got people from all over Wisconsin, um, all over the country, maybe even some other countries. So come on in. We've got a, we've got a few friends in the audience here with Val tonight. Um, and you'll be meeting those friends later. And just looking to see... Um, how we're, how are you doing tonight, Val? Oh, the Minoya. Looking good. That's fantastic. All right. Well, let's see. I put up this little map because uh, we get a lot of friends from Canada, which is fantastic. A lot of Ojibwe up in Canada have joined us over this year and last year. Um, this is our second program for the year. Uh, last week we did Mike, Mike Wiggins joined us as a storyteller and I've received a few emails and messages about that. And yes, if you did miss his session, it was recorded and it will be available uh, on, it is available on our YouTube page. So all you need to do is go to the YouTube channel and type in Wisconsin Historical Society and our little channel should come up and it'll have all our different videos. We've got lots of different videos because we have a very large uh, organization that does lots of many interesting things. So we have uh, the storytellers, we have um, some things about the, the dugout canoe. We have a video about how to clean um, cemetery gravestones because like I said, we're with a lot of different departments in our organization that post a lot of things. So if you go to the YouTube channel, you'll be able to find Mike from last week. You'll be able to find uh, Leon, Greg, Edith, <clears throat> and Michael from last year. We had four delightful storytellers last year, and it has been just a wonderful experience to be able to bring this to everyone. We've got a few more minutes. The, the hellos come really fast. Um, uh, someone from California. Nice. And Pleasantville, Iowa. Hi, Tom. Tom joined us last year from Pleasantville, Ohio, oh, Iowa. Hey, um, can I mention? <laughs> so, um, and Chicago and Massachusetts. Uh, it's great to see everybody logging in tonight. And we have a few other guests in the room, but we also have a few folks uh, that are, did that just say Sydney, Australia? I what time is it in Sydney, Australia? Because many moons ago, I myself went to Sydney, Australia, just when I was in college and, and backpacked around the country. I had a, a fantastic experience. Well, so you guys know I'm Bad River and I grew up in Bad River. And, and then I went and did my undergrad at, at Madison, UW-Madison. I, I did my PhD at University of Michigan. Um, but during my undergrad years, I uh, backpacked Australia. And I had the fortune to visit a, an, an Aboriginal uh, reservation area. It reminded me a lot of home. It was a really fascinating, interesting experience. Um, 
beautiful people, uh, uh, wonderful experience to, to be able to meet new cultures always. Right, you guys? Oh, it's noon. Thank you. <laughs> Someone just texted me that it's noon on Wednesday in Sydney. So I really appreciate that. Um, that is a, that is a long way from home. <laughs> All right, how are we doing on time? Is it we're just about ready? Well, you guys can keep uh, just putting in the chat box where you're from. Does my slideshow just come up? So if you could go to the next slide, um, who's ever running my slides? Great, fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to go over a few little housekeeping things. <clears throat> so right now we have the chat box open for you. We're going to close that chat box while Val is talking, because otherwise it just kind of pops up the whole time. But we really encourage you to ask questions. And to do that, be sure to use the Q&A button at the bottom. So it's uh, in this picture, it's on the right. But I think, yeah, it looks like it's next to the chat box in my actual real Zoom right now. It's on the left hand of the chat box. So that's what you can use any time during the presentation. Val's gonna talk for about 50 minutes, but Val is an elder and she's going to need some breaks. Um, yes, I, is that a question for me? Are you native? I am native, yes. I'm a member of the Bad River tribe in Northern Wisconsin. Um, the chat will be closed while Val is sharing her stories and it will reopen at the end for goodbyes. And like I said, Val is an elder, so she needs to have a few little breaks. So we might do some, um, uh, we're gonna have a little participation, group participation. Like I said, we've got this lovely group assembled here that you will meet later. And uh, Val's gonna walk us through some things. Uh, our friend Robin here is, is, you haven't met him yet, but you will. He's volunteered to sing a song for us and you will learn more about that. But for now, I am going to go ahead and introduce Val Barber. What I like to do in these presentations is allow people to introduce themselves. I always find that more comfortable when I have to be introduced. And um, so I'm going to turn it over to Val Barber. Um, I'm so honored. I can tell you a little bit about, that, about Val. She is an absolute treasure. Uh, in northern Wisconsin uh, from the LCO tribe and the, and the other bands up here. Very well respected. She was my daughter's Ojibwe language teacher um, uh, during the pandemic, which was no easy feat. They met over Zoom like this. Um, and she is a, a delight and we're very honored to have her tonight. Val, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. And I just punch this. Okay. Well, <clears throat> this is one of those cases where you um, are caught unaware. Mm -hmm. You're caught unaware, and um, you've uh, you've before you know it, you've volunteered to do something. Uh, this is not the first time this happened to me. Um, I, I agreed to a radio interview one time and the next thing I knew I was going to the powwow in Siston, South Dakota among the, the Sioux people who are kind of our, long time ago they were our hereditary enemies. And so I was the only Northern dancer there at the powwow. And it was terrifying for them. <laughs> okay. Um, just a couple of things before I introduce myself formally to you. Um, the introduction how we'll, to how we'll do this. If I use a word or a phrase first in Ojibwe, I will translate it afterwards. Um, I know a lot of people uh, have 
very little acquaintance with Ojibwe language, Ojibwe Moen. Also, we'll be doing some total physical response movement. That is, um, you, you poor guys that signed up to listen, you'll have to move around, no couch potatoes here. Uh, you will move with the stories and I'll show, we'll take a little break and I'll show you how to do that um, about 10 minutes in. Okay. Okay, so Anin in the way Magan and Duke Minua, the Bumi Agasak. Hello, all my relatives, and especially my adopted ones, my students. Um, the short form of Bumi Agasak, uh, which means adopted ones, is bum. So my, my little bums. Dunamakagu Oma, Mashkazibing, Superior Anda Sigan. Welcome here to the Bad River People's Home, the Medicine River, and that is on this side of the Great Lake Superior, uh, the south side. Okay. Bell Barber and Dijanakaz, Shaganashimoen. Bell Barber is my name in English, which we call the soldier's talk, because we first heard this language from the British soldiers. Starting whirlwind is my Anishinaabe or Ojibwe name. I asked my father uh, where this name came from. And of course he told me a little story about it. He said it describes the reflection of a thunderbird's wings on the earth. The force causes the air to start to move in a circular direction, which um, as many unfortunate people know, uh, that can then gather great force. And then we have the hurricanes and whirlwinds. But my father referred to me as a tempest in a teapot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, a lot of Ojibwe still remember and belong to a particular clan. Um, so Awasasi and Dude, I'm Bullhead clan, and we are the traditional teachers of our people. Uh, we're also known to be very stubborn, to lay low, and to think deep thoughts. Where I'm from. Um, I come from the Lacoudere Reservation. Now, Lacoudere in French, this translates to the Lake of the Short Ears, probably because we didn't wear the heavy copper or silver earrings that other tribal people did um, up north in Canada and Min upper Minnesota. However, the actual name of the lake, the reservation, uh, is Odawa Zagai Gunning. It means the lake of the traders. And so I have just some, some quick, quick points here. Adawe or Odawe means trading. And there's actually a tribe, the Ottawa. And these were the famous traders from a long time ago. They were actually part of our people along Mewisha back when the earth was in diapers. <laughs> so Gai Gun. Uh, means lake, so you can see how these pieces fit into the name of this place. Uh, when you add the ing ending, it makes it a particular or certain place. Uh, so there you go, Odawa, the trading, Zagai Gunning, the lake, and Ing, that particular lake. Indunjaba means I come from that place. Are we hearing okay? Oh, it's okay. I'll just guess on and on without it. All right. Okay. You can't see it. Oh. Well, why don't you guys work on that and I'll okay. continue on. Okay, all right. 
Okay. So where uh, where I live, Omakakimi Kanong in Dayan. You got used four kids had to learn to say this about five million times, but they got it. All right. So Omakaki is the name of our green brother, the frog. Uh, Mikana is a road, and Mikanong is that particular road. Uh, and Dayan means I live there. So, Omakaki Mikanong, and Dayan, I live on Frog Road. Okay. Debatum. Debatimoen is one story. Debatimoen and our stories. So, Akawe. First of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about storytelling itself. Storytelling is as old as time. Everyone tells stories, whether they realize it or not. Uh, the cave people and the early people without caves. Uh, probably sat around and told each other stories. Uh, stories were to inform and, of course, to brag. Uh, to keep the kids quiet, to keep each other entertained, and to record history by making another story about a particular event that happened. So most of all, storytelling is a practiced use of language make things interesting, and to teach important life concepts and values. So, stories, always, always, always. People are famous all over the world for their storytelling. I've heard stories from everywhere. The cold places, the intermediate zones, and the hot spots. Personally, I think some of the greatest storytellers were the Egyptians. That story about that dung beetle that was rolling his ball across the, the sky, and that was the sun. Well, everybody knows a dung, dung beetle rolls a ball at dung, you know? Uh, but anyway, uh, I think those archaeologists kind of missed the point on that one. The, um, that was a really good story, though. They were such fabulous mathematicians and builders, too. But look, people still think aliens had to help with the pyramids. I think the secret to how they did those pyramids is probably buried somewhere in their stories. Maybe not necessarily about the dung beetle, but about some other uh, little guys. Which brings me to a thought. When I was in school, we were taught that the discovery the world was round was a relatively recent discovery. Um, maybe a sailor figured it out. All right, all right. So what happened to the moon? The ancient Greeks, the Indian Indians, the American Indians, Indian Indians, and many more indigenous peoples. They already figured this out long before. They liked math. And they figured out an eclipse could only be caused by a spherical object casting a shadow on the moon, you know, as it went, moon goes through its phases. Um, and the total eclipse of the sun is the moon coming between the earth and the sun. And if these people were smart, they had to be smart to survive. But nobody wanted to hear it. And our favorite, Christopher Columbus, even got credit for discovering the world was round. And this was thanks to another master storyteller, Washington Irving. He wrote Rip Van Winkle and the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. He also wrote The Life and Voyages of Christopher Columbus with suitable flourishes and embellishments. And people were not as educated as they are now in the early days of America. And they hopped right on this idea about Chris Columbus being a terrific hero and even discovering the world was round. They jumped right on that idea. And this was 
in the rush in the early days of our country, this, there was kind of a rush to create our own uh, American traditions. And I believe it was like in 1828 when Washington Irving wrote this, this book, and it immediately became a bestseller and Chris Columbus became a folk hero. Okay. They even gave him a holiday, national holiday, Chris Columbus Day. And later on, millions of kids probably kept quiet about this even when they got older because they wanted that day off from school. So what can happen? Here we have two examples of how a story can be beautiful and give a very humble being a starring role and probably contains observations and allusions that the archeologists, like I said, they don't get it because they don't speak the language. They don't know the culture. They're not Egyptian for the most part. And they dismiss a lot of storytelling and say, oh, it's only a tale. Even though Mr. Don Beetle still became a revered scarab and a hero to his people, the Egyptians. And then again, there's how another story can elevate a villain, basically a villain to great heights. And Columbus got his holiday. Okay, patience is, they always say that patience is a virtue. You guys are probably stomping your feet, getting impatient to hear some stories. But I just wanted to kind of introduce the idea that although our stories are entertaining, they're also a great tool for teaching behavior and ideas. Ojibwe people were no exception to the idea of using our language this way. There are wonderful human behavior references in our old stories, um, especially the wintertime only Winnebuju stories. These old stories are about our cultural hero, Winnebuju a trickster who was very human, even though he had wonderful powers that the creator gave him, he still made mistakes and he was naughty. Sometimes he did things wrong. So we would know not to do those things. Many of my other story characters are weighing in at less than a pound. So you'll have to look at the smaller world tonight and try to understand that these are our fellow beings in their own right and they have personalities too. Okay. I would like you guys to have some, make some moves with us. Um, I will ask you all for this favor. I'll be making some motions as I tell stories and some expressions that I would like you to do with me. And this will help you get into the stories. You could do a lot of things. You can be the wind. You can be the rain. Oh my God. You can be the snow that's softly coming down like that. And you can be the sunshine and smile. Uh, okay, you can stop your feet. And like I said, you can make faces. That's for you. <laughs> you can flap your wings. You know, if you're a big bird, you can flap mine. If you're a little, want to do a suck, a little insect, you just barely have any wings that so you kind of flap it along like that. Okay. You can stretch, try to make yourself bigger. <laughs> There's a lot of animals that do that. You know, they're really little bitty guys, but when they get scared, they go, oh, and they scare off their enemies. I do that a lot. Okay, you can give yourself a hug. Yeah. If you're an insect, you can give yourself a hug up here, a hug down here. And basically, I, I can't do it. You could hug with your high knees, maybe. But anyway, you think about that for a while. We'll work it out. Okay, you also get to shake your tail sometimes, right? Shake, shake, shake. I'm sitting down so I can't believe. 
can't really show you how to do that too well. Uh, okay, let's get started then. Um, my first story is about Winnebuju. Winnebuju, Winnewa, Shishibug. This is Winnebuju and the Ducks. And this story was given to me by my uncle, Louis Barber. Uh, we back when my dad was in his 70s, Louis, his brother, was in his 90s. So he just loved saying, oh, and then my older brother, Nisaye, <laughs> don't you hardly think someone that old could have an older brother? OK, but anyway, um, it was a long time ago. It was a back, like I said, when the world was very young, probably still in diapers or packed in moss like they used to do way a long time ago. Winnebuju uh, uh, was sitting around and he was bored and he was part, uh, camped on the side of the lake. Park, listen to that, I'm so modern. Uh, he was camped on the side of the lake and he, oh, he was just kind of singing little songs to himself and he was watching the, he was watching the cattails and the reeds around the lake. And he saw some ducks go by and they were, they were cruising, they were paddling, they were on a mission. Oh, he watched them for quite a while. And he noticed because he was a keen observer of all things, just as we should all be. Um, he noticed that they came in closer and closer to the lake as they were going around feeding. And pretty soon they must have had enough to eat because they came up on the shore and they were just kind of doing their duck thing over there, uh, walking around and preening. Come on, you guys preen a little bit here. Uh, they were preening their feathers which actually runs, you know, makes them waterproof. They were oiling up uh, and just generally doing their duck thing. And he thought, you know, I've been watching those guys all day and they are starting to look a good. Now, good is a Ojibwe word that means delicious. <laughs> so he said, you know, I think I'm going to invite them in for dinner. But he didn't put it like that to the ducks. He said, oh, come on over here. Come on over here. Come on over. And so the ducks kind of looked at him and they start coming closer, closer. And he said, oh, she she but my my Shimeak, my little brothers, my little brothers and sisters, he said, I'm I'm just staying home today and I'm thinking I'm, I might like to have a dance with you guys, you know. So you want to do that. So he um got a little hand drum and he was, you know, he was making a little song for them. And they start to do it. Duck walked right into his little tent there and kind of walked around the fire a couple of times. And he was encouraging them, you know, oh, dance harder. He said, and you know, it's really good if you kind of close your eyes and you lose yourself in the dance. So they first they were reluctant. Then after a while, they shut their eyes and, you know, they found out, yes. With all the distractions, it really was nice to dance with your eyes shut. Well, what he was, what Buju was doing was he was going around, he was wringing their necks because they had their eyes closed. And then he would stick their, stick them into the ashes of the fire. And all that was sticking out then was the webs of those ducks and they were just nicely roasting and the other ones were still dancing. Well, finally, there was one smart duck, you know, and he thought, I don't hear my friends anymore. Maybe I better see what's going on. So he opened his eyes, and when Abuja saw him open his eyes, and there was still quite a few ducks behind him, you know, but this one duck, 
He opened his eyes and when Bozhu slapped him just hard in the face and came a great, great, great across his eyes and his beak and everything. And he said, what did you do that for? He said, no, everybody knows. And then that duck starts screaming, he is killing us, he's killing us. And he let the rest of the party out there. And when he got out there, they said, what's wrong with you? You look different. And where when Abuja slapped him, it made his eyes turn red. And that was the punishment he gave that duck, that duck for telling on him. He made his eyes red and forever after that particular diving duck has red eyes, as do the loons. And so that was how Winnebuju got even with that duck that ratted him out. Okay, so such a violent story. <laughs> okay, my next story was given to me by my friend Ruby Robertson. And it came from her father, Monty Diamond. Uh, oh, oh, he can't so crazy. That smart girl. Okay, so this is another Winnebuju story. And I think I told you that these are only told in the winter because Ojibwe people, I believe, are great psychologists, as are many, many, many people in the world uh, for their children. And they said, oh, you only do that storytelling in the winter time, and that's so those kids would keep quiet in the winter, and then in the summertime they'd be free to help with the stuff that had to be done. So it was a very smart thing to restrict these to the winter. Okay, so anyway, Miwaja, long ago, in a buju spite this. Oh, this this beautiful girl. Um, and he just thought, oh, I, I don't know what's going to happen to me if I don't get to know her and have her uh, be, not, you know, be my girlfriend. I don't know what I'll do. And he sat there and thought about it for a while. And he thought, well, I might as well take the direct approach. So he just walked up to her. And on the way walking up to her, because he could do these things, he fixed his clothes so that they would look nice, he, you know, his, put a little gloss in his hair, um, straightened, you know, like Ojibwe people traditionally wear a roach headdress, uh, you know, for, for dancing, for special occasions. Uh, and that is a, a sort of headpiece that has uh, pork, it's made out of porcupine guard hair, not the quills, but the guard hair and some of the hair from uh, deer tail. Well, let me tell you, when Winnebuju got done classing himself up, the uh, sake, he was just beautiful. And his old porcupine headdress was standing straight up. And he walked up to that girl and he said, are you new around here? <laughs> Oldest line in the book. Uh, and Unfortunately, she didn't like him. She already had a boyfriend. You know, he just he just came at the wrong time. Uh, inopportune lover, yeah, came at the wrong time. So he didn't give up. I mean, God, he was outside her house every evening playing a flute, trying to yeah, court her, you know. tried songs on his hand drum like Robin, there you know. He, he followed her around, he came at her unexpected places like Birch Hill or, you know, A-Town and LCO. Sometimes he went to Red Cliff if she went up there. Just wouldn't leave her alone, wouldn't leave her alone, wouldn't leave her alone. This went on all summer long. She couldn't get rid of this guy. And he finally said, well, there's only one thing left to do. I'll just, uh, I'll just tell her I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm just going to, this is another oldest, oldest line in the book. Too. I'm just going to die if you want to be my girlfriend. 
And she took pity on him. And she said, well, it's good to be fall, you know, she said, how about after all the trees lose all their leaves? I'll go out with you. Oh, yes, he was so agreeable. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, a thousand times yes. Yes. And he spent a lot of time looking at trees. <laughs> but the August, still a lot of leaves. He was out in the woods kind of beating them off there a little bit. Uh, be September. He was shaking the trees by that time. Just couldn't get them all off. But he, he did ask the creator to help him. And the winds came. Remember the winds? Like that. And, and most of the leaves went down. And he said, oh, please, please, they're all gone. And she goes, nope, not all gone. See that tree over there? Still got leaves on it. And he turned around and looked. There was an oak tree. And what do you guys know about oak trees? Anybody? Going, going, going. They don't lose their leaves in the wintertime. <laughs> so she never had to go out with him. Because he agreed. All the leaves had to be gone. That's what she said. Okay, so she was she was one heck of a smart girl. Okay, and thank you to Ruby for that that story. Okay, um, well before you before you feel too sorry about how she tricked that guy, we'll go right into the next story. Um, this is called Ode Minan Strawberries, and this was given to me by my my dear friend Cyrilla Ford used to work for Glyphwick up here, famous for her fry bread, just an all around nice person. I think you had some for fry bread, right? Okay. Um, okay, so there was a a couple, a man and a woman, and they lived together quite a few years. Um they had no children. And he started to get snappish and he expected more and more from her all the time. You know, in the beginning, it was a lubby dubby, you know, but he started getting snappish and saying, Where's my, how come my dinner is not ready? How come my, my clothes aren't fixed? How come you haven't? gone hunting and gotten something to eat. And he started to push her. He started to not speak to her. And, and finally she decided, I think I'll leave you. And she did, she waited till he was out hunting. And she left. She just packed her little duds in a bag and she took off. And she went a long ways. And when he, he came back, she was gone. And he thought, oh, I don't care. I don't care. She wasn't very nice anyway. Not good enough for me. Well, came to be its second day. Still gone. He thought, she should have been back, but no. She can't live without me. Right. So, third day. Still didn't come back. And he said, well, I, I really miss her. I miss her. I'm not complete without her. And he said, Je mana do, I got away to caution. Please help me, creator. Help me, help me bring her back. I'm going to go after her. But help me find her again, my love. And so he took off after her. Well, she had a couple of days head start on him by that time, you know. So the creator thought, well, I guess I could take pity on him. And so he, he's, he sent some peculiar plants ahead of the woman. 
and she saw them. They were a flash of red. And she thought, oh, I wonder what that is. And she went over there and they were strawberries. And she thought, you know, I bet those are good to eat and I'm really hungry and thirsty. So she bent down and she started to pick those. In the meantime, he was catching up with her, you know. And so she finally got enough of them. She took off again on her way. And the creator caused a few more of those to ripen ahead of her. And so by the time she was almost back to her mom's uh, village and her family lodge, um, just outside of there, he caught up with her. And he said, please, please take me back. And he gave her a handful of those strawberries. And she so loved those berries by that time that she said, okay. Then she started setting conditions all the way back to his lodge. <laughs> okay. I think we are going to have to... Uh, I need a little break. My voice is getting shot. Um, what, uh, what I would like to do, though, you know, is uh, we'll, we'll tell a quick story about Swan. Mm -hmm. And um, Liz has kindly volunteered to <laughs> demonstrate the Swan dance for us. <laughs> and then Robin has offered to demonstrate a fish dance. This will probably take us to the end of the uh, hour. Well, actually, Val, we kind of switched things when you were in the bathroom. Uh... <laughs> oh, tell the world, tell the world, tell Sydney, <laughs> Australia. I was caught in the bathroom. Go ahead. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> I told, I told my bosses I wanted to present to the world how real natives are. And this is how we are right we're, we, we're doing our best we're rolling along okay. we 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 do our we do what we can but robin has volunteered hey robin come here oh, you're over there. yeah i just get in my camera here okay. so i work at this place called the northern great lakes visitor center and, and as i mentioned before and robin is actually one of my colleagues here he's, he's on the cleaning crew so he's going to sing a song that val is going to prep for us so she's going to explain about this song and he's going to sing it and then I will do your actions, Val. If you tell me what I what to do, I'll do them. But we've got live music. We've oh, got some dancing. Oh, oh. oh uh, it's it's going down in the visitor center tonight. Okay. <laughs> so, so I will. How about we go over here, Robin? Oh, Robin, can you introduce yourself? I apologize. Okay. Can they see you? You got to come up a little bit, I think. A yeah. bit. I'm not going to be cut off at the top there. Yeah, All right. there, you're good. All right. Okay. So, Val so I'll, I'll do the quick introduction to the swan and fish dances. Yeah. Okay. Um, like, I didn't even get to the smaller guys, but <laughs> anyway, uh, the uh, Ojibwe people told stories about how beautiful the swan is one of the largest birds in North America, and it was much, much beloved by the Ojibwe. And they tell a story about how that swan, you know, was homely when she was she was growing up, and she she didn't have the best clothes, and she had scabs on her knees, and she just looked terrible. Her Clothes were mostly gray from washing with with no, they, you know. I feel attacked now. <laughs> I feel attacked. Anyway. I'm in the janitor's clothes, so I mean, you're good. So Go ahead, Must be improvised with, yeah. the, with the hand drum we had to MacGyver uh -huh. from the basement. <laughs> I'm okay. sure notice as uh, this is very Ojibwe right here. He right? found a stick in his car. I had my drumsticks. I had no hand drum, but I found this. So we, you know, this is the finest Ojibwe story right here. <laughs> I remember stories of my grandpa and oh, my. my grandpa Squirrel Thomas, uh, Bill Baker, the drum maker, and my aunt, 
They would mm -hmm. always sing on whatever they had back okay. in the day. Car hoods. Long time ago, or yes. the fun ones. <laughs> <laughs> the old 60s Chevy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, when that swan became a uh, young lady swan, she became beautiful. And she always remembered who had been kind to her, who had not made fun of her gray clothes and scabby legs. And she, she would lead the, when they were mi migrating back to the South, she would lead the formation, the flock. And she asked that her fellow swans go in a line and then every, every so often that line would separate and then go back together again. And this was so to conserve their strength so they didn't get tired. And the toughest of all the swans, the old lady swan would bring up the last, bring up the rear and make sure nobody dropped out and nobody got too tired. And this is a swan song by Robin. And uh, uh, I'm going to introduce myself real quick. Benesi is in the cause. Oda was a guy. I ain't getting a huge ba. Among in due name. My English name is Robin Thomas. I'm from the Lacoudere band. And this song was taught to me by um, one of our well known friends, teachers, song uh, leaders, uh, Louis White from Lacoudere. Mm -hmm. And when Val was explaining how this song goes, it was taught to me that when that when we get to that second part of that song, there you'll hear the beat of the drum a certain way. And that's when that swan is supposed to go out and go back in. So yeah. Whenever you guys are ready. Um one quick thing. I could actually stand back while you guys good um i think val wants people to participate at home right val so we want especially you kids out there so tell us what we need to do val and we will do it who else is going to come help me come on vinnie and dancers line up dancers will they be able to see us if we go all the way no they can only see us here like in this little space okay i'm just trying to think of how we're going to do this then um and you can make the v and Come back, go in and out. Make, make the line. And, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. To the so what, uh, what? You lead and then we'll follow. Two push ups. <laughs> two times through. Two push ups. What is a push up, Robin? Well, a push up is <laughs> one time through the song for those of you that uh, don't yeah. know. We yeah. might only oh, have time one, for one. One time through? Yeah. Okay. So we, we'll I've break. got one more short story to tell. After well, we should start. Then. We should start. Yeah. All right. And, all right. And that is how a uh, ugly swan becomes a beautiful swan. <laughs> me glitch, me glitch. And that is how a janitor becomes a singer. Yes. Oh, you did you awesome. want to do fish dance first and then finish with what you got? Can we go over time a little? Yeah, yeah, you can. It's fine. Okay, fish dance. Fish dance while we're set up. Uh, I can't do this one. Yeah.
That's a that's why can't it's it's challenge. It's gonna be hard to sing and dance at the same time. Come you on, are Dylan. On the spot. You can do you it, are Dylan. On the spot. Hey. These lovely people you're seeing with me, um, my daughter Vidi Wabandato was joining me in the swan dance. I apologize if I was offbeat, a little nervous. And then we've got little lovely Dylan Oja, who is a friend of hers, a friend of our family, great kid. He's never done the fish dance before, but Val's going to. And Philip Brady. And Philip Brady, one of the teachers at Ashland High. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, Bad or Dylan and Vidi are both Bad River, like me. Mm -hmm. And what? Philip's Bad River, too, I guess, or Ashland. For He's Ashland. <laughs> <laughs> Philip's just an ally, and he's a wonderful friend, and we appreciate it. So, yeah. okay, so now, Robin, I'm going to take over, because this is a men's dance. This is a men's dance, and the interesting thing about it is this dance has a part that progresses backwards, and we all know that sometimes men do that, go backwards. All right. Giku, Giku Yak, Nimi, Nimi, Nimi Win. Fish dance. You guys ready? Just the instructions. All right, so <laughs> there's going to be a point in the song. We're going to start. It's going to be a straight part. If there's going to be a break, when we go to the straight beat, you guys miss first. Your first move is going to be this. Yeah, and then there you go. It's going to break. Then you're going to go with me. Then it's going to break again like this. You're going to go this way. That just represents the fish swimming around. And it's going to break again. And it's going to be the same song. Repetitive, repetitive. So each time I break, you'll know when to break. Do you want to move those tails a little bit? Uh, it depends on which room they got. You can do it in place. And this okay. is another example. We want all the boys and men at yep, home yep, to please get up and so, so join the third, in. The third move is going to be back to the same. You'll start one way, go the other each time. So the, the third run is you're going to go like this, and you're going to do that. Wave your fins. Yeah, wave your fins. And then you're going to do it the other way on that on that other break. Then is where the athletic part gets. And this is what everyone knows. Everyone likes this part because this is where you start jumping around. You're going to you gotta do that back and forth twice. Then we're going to make it easy because everyone does push-ups. You guys got to go do push-ups each way. So each break of the song, we're going to see if you guys can remember that now, Crash Chorus. <laughs> I used to do it all the time at the Indian Bowl. I used to do the Indian Bowl with Spockating a long time ago when I was a kid. Uh -huh. I used to do, I think it was my brother, Apane, came here and did a demonstration with Joe Rose a long time ago. So we don't have them here to help us. So you guys are on the spot. I get to sing the song. And then the last move, when it's all done, you guys are going to swim away, and that's going to be the end of the song. So we're going to try to make this as, see, oh, left, oops. right. Am I moving in place or am I walking? You can do it in place because, and then with the cameras here and everything. Yeah, show the camera. So. Yeah. So you're yeah. going to go like this, then like this, then you're going to go on one knee, do the same thing. Yep, yep. yep. And then the other way. Uh -huh. Then you uh -huh. go. You can kind of go in place, you know. <laughs> I'll keep him, I'll keep the song short so you guys don't gotta do it like they do at the Powells. They'll really drill the guys. Oh, yeah, so oh yeah, they'll make the, that part really long. And then the last part will be the push-ups. And then <laughs> the very yeah, you can just do regular push-ups. We'll do one time through on those oh. just to demonstrate, and then the final move will be you guys will swim away. Yeah. Okay. So all right. <laughs> our our rendition of the fish dance on short notice. <laughs> We're going to have a crew here next year. <laughs> <laughs> Just do your best, and you've got a lot of people at home. All right. right. So, yeah, so follow that. If you know the fish dance somewhere out there, you guys can make make it make it how it's supposed to be. This is just a very short, brief version of it. Obviously, we're working with what we have. As all we, right. we all did it for many, many years. Here we are. <laughs>
Sing and dance it at the same time. Usually it was just one or the other. So thank you. I, 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 I really out of I see you heart. guys are struggling, so I was like, I'm really struggling. So thank you for this. I'm going to make a story. Much, about thank this. you guys. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Robin, Dylan, Phil, Viddy. Okay, Val, you want to finish it? Bring us home with your with your good lightning bug story. Oh, <laughs> oh my sister always tells me that not to tell the story about that depressed mug. <laughs> anyway, really, really quickly, um, this is a story that was given to me by my father. We used to go fishing together and was the evening before that. And he said, you know, it's going to be fun. Here we were out in the lake looking at them. And he told me this story uh, about Wawa Tacy. He said he was just an ordinary looking gray uh, bug. And uh, in Ojibwe culture, the insects and snails and all the smaller people are called the Manadusa. They are the eyes and ears of the creator. You know, they're always down there looking around, moving around. Uh, and so you had to behave because they were always watching you and they could rat you out at any time. At least we were threatened that day. So, well, Atesi was uh, pretty depressed one evening. He, uh, he was by a lake and he climbed up on a particular leaf that he favored and he was sitting up there. And as he thought thoughts to himself, he got more and more depressed. And so he thought, well, you know, I just watched those geese and swans go by, uh, and they, you know, coming in for their evening, evening flight, he said. And I tried to, I tried to fly like that, he said, just beautiful, just beautiful big wings beating like that. And I couldn't do it. He said, I just went up and then I kind of crashed on. My wings just aren't good enough. He said, and then the loon started to sing and call and laugh. He said, and I tried to sing with them. My voice just went, oh, uh, you know, I was just pitiful. He said, and then I saw the frogs and they were jumping around by the edge of the lake, having a good old time, he said. So I, I got in the spirit of it, and I jumped, and I fell off my leaf, and I knocked myself out on the ground there, and I just barely made it, made it back up here now. He said, so, Dagag is able to do, we do Kawish, and please, creator, help me. I, I'm just not good at anything. Why am I even here? And then he heard the wind answer him, just kind of came by, shh, like that. And the creator's voice was on that little breeze. He said, Oh, well, Atesi, embrace yourself. You don't have to be like everybody else. You don't have to fly that high. You don't have to hop like the frogs. All those things are particular to their people. He said, you are you. You have your people, he said. So embrace yourself. Give yourself a, give yourself a hug. And so Awatesi hugged himself. And the creator said, 
maybe a little bit harder with your second pair of legs. So Awatesi hugged himself hard with the second pair of legs. And of all things, his rear end lit up. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I could do that. Uh, and so the creator said, well, that's my, that's my gift to you. So go ahead, try it out. So Malatesi, he found out that flying the pattern up and then dropping down because of his weak wings, it worked out okay. He taught all his friends how to fly like that. And he also taught them to like themselves and to give themselves a big hug. So there, the ash would light up. <laughs> but as they went down, you know, it went, they flickered. So the lesson in that, the creator said, please, please don't be dissatisfied with who you are. You have abilities that you haven't even discovered yet. And so you should embrace yourself because you never know what might happen. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in, in my final the goodbye to everyone, uh, the creator told Valatesi that his name means the fight fly, and that he and his people are the reflection of the stars on earth. Miigwech, Zendaye. Oh no, questions. I'm going to jail for sure. <laughs> All right. We got some we got some questions for you, but I did want to thank Val and Robin. If I can get my camera. Um, that little impromptu session we just had was the most fun I've had in such a long time. It just reminded me of my childhood. My grandpa used to sing, and sometimes friends would come over and just boom, we'd be going, you know, something would be happening. And um it was really lovely and i it was a different time then. it really was yeah, it. oh it. that was so nice 70s was... yeah when they were still oh. singing all the time yeah yeah <laughs> oh you're gonna make me cry all right beautiful thank you for that i really appreciate it we do have some questions for val uh let me see miss val one of the questions had to do with, the, you talked about women and, in your stories a lot and powerful women. So one of the questions we had is, is this a reflection of Ojibwe views on women? Are Ojibwe men afraid of us beautiful Ojibwe women? <laughs> Gawain. 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 Gawain means no. <laughs> It should be. Well, actually, uh, I, I brought this up in several different menus or areas. Uh, there were a lot of different ways of looking at gender roles that uh, the Ojibwe and other tribal people had that are not, um, they were suppressed for many years. Colonial people came in, uh, and they were horrified to find out that we had as many as five different uh, genders that were perfectly acceptable. Um, and uh, the individuals who were different, you know, from the colonial's view of, of a man is a man and a woman is, behind him or under him, uh, we were forced on our people because in, in our society, the, uh, the I'm not sure, L, L, LGBTQ, uh, some two or something. Uh, two spirit people? The two spirit people, yeah, Mijo Shachani, they um, were the medicine people and the teachers, um, the artists, and they were considered um, blessed by the moon. And that was how they were referred to when they were children and they decided to 
make that decision to go that different path. The people were saying that they were blessed by the moon. So we didn't have that strict um, gender. Gender, yes, gender yeah. yeah. Oh, they say to not hold your microphone because it makes it hard to hear. Oh, it makes it hard. Okay. I just got a note. Well, another <laughs> next question I got was um, you talked about, uh, I noticed something with your storytelling is you so and so told me this, so and so shared this with me. Why is that important to, to share that? Or why did you want to share that with, with our listeners tonight? Um. That's just the tradition the storytellers here. You don't uh, take credit for something that already exists, you know. However, you can embellish that. <laughs> Uh, we have a few other Native uh, listeners who want to know if you were talking about them with these bad pickup lines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not naming names, but I seize you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we've just about come to the end. Did I miss another one? Oh, I'm sorry. I got one more. What was the reason why we wait till the snow touches the ground to tell stories or mention uh, Winnebuja by name? Well, no one likes to be talked about. <laughs> yeah, we just talked about that one second ago. Those guys you don't like you telling their, their stories. <laughs> um, and I believe I did say that it was, it was um, a really smart uh, psychology to restrict the stories to the winter time so you know the kids could pay attention and then they, they probably carry up the house you know and then they be restricted as to winter because in the summertime then they could come out and help with stuff but learn how to do other things without getting the best of all the stories. Well, that is all we have. Thank you, Miigwech, Val. And thank you, Phil, Vidi, Dylan, Robin, uh, for participating in the dances, the singing. Robin, we are a tremendous debt to you. Um, and you're blowing up right now. Everyone's loving, everyone's loving your moves, guys. Everyone's loving the singing. Yeah. <laughs> We're going viral. <laughs> if we can go powwow season, it gets better. Oh yeah, he, we'll we'll keep you posted when the, when powwow season starts up again, and Robin will be on the road. Um, so I did. If you guys could put up my slides, please. The next slide. Thank you. So there's a lovely picture of Kubi. Oh, did you ever tell him why you go by Kubi now? Oh, on a Kubi is our ancestor of the great grandma. No, the interesting thing about that. Uh, is that a great grandchild is also called on the Kubik And so we have um, the Kubik and the Kubik and uh, calling each other Kubik. That's a short form, the affectionate form. You can call your grand, grandchild that, or great grandchild, and then they call you that. Or great okay. Okay. Um, we've got, so Kubi Val, we've got this lovely picture of her wearing uh, some type of fish from her region. That is the name, sturgeon. <laughs> That's, so yeah, they have a, oh no, you guys don't have a sturgeon fest. You have a musky fest over mm -hmm. by you. Okay. Yeah. So she's wearing a sturgeon hat. And you can contact her. There's her email. That's the best way to contact her. Or you can always contact me too um, at the Historical Society. Yes, this recording will be available on our YouTube page, on our YouTube channel. And if you have feedback for us tonight, please go to our survey, which you see on the screen and probably popped up in your chat and enter the ID number 8829. That is Val's ID number. Okay, if you could go to the next slide, please. Oh, they say you turned you accidentally turned off your mic, Val. So you can connect with us, uh, Wisconsin Historical Society, by following us on Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. 
Um, email still works too. You can call us, you can email us, but if you want to go to more events like this and see what we've got going on, those are often posted on the social media pages. And our last slide, please. Thank you. So join us uh, for two more weeks of stories. So next week we have Chris Magizic uh, from Mo Lake Tribe. He will be uh, joining us Tuesday, January 24th at 7 p.m. And same time, same place. Well, actually, I think I'm going to be out in Bad River with him, but um, maybe we should get the band back together, guys. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you, Val, so much. I appreciate it. Good night, everyone. See you next week. Bye.